Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at lead code problem and the problem's name is perfect squares. So in this question, we are given an integer n and we have to return the least number of perfect squares that are needed to sum up to n. By definition, a perfect square is an integer that is a square of an integer. In other words, it is the product of some integer with itself. So this is a point which can be implemented using code. So for example, 1, 4, 9, 16 are perfect squares because if you multiply a number with itself, you get uh, these respective numbers. For example, if you multiply 1 into 1, you get uh, 1. You get 4 if you multiply 2 into 2. You get 9 if you multiply 3 into 3. You get 16 if you multiply 4 into 4 and so on. 25, 36, 49 are perfect squares. Whereas for example, 3 and 11 are not perfect squares because there is no number which when multiplied with itself gives 3 or 11. So let's take these examples and see how we can form this question. So let's take the first example n is equal to 12 and here we have to observe that we need to get the least number of perfect squares that sum up to n and what are the perfect squares? The perfect square starts from 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 49 and so on. So here you can see that 1 is a perfect square and we know you can build any number for example 12 using 12 ones. So 12 into 1 is equal to 1. So this means 12 ones if you add them up is equal to 12. So there are 12 ones here. So 12 will be the maximum number but we need to find the minimum number. So we have to pick the perfect square. So for 12 you can pick 1. You can pick 4 because it is less than 12. You can pick 9 because it is less than 12. And you cannot pick 16 because if you pick 16 it is already greater than n. So you can't add this with something to make it to 12. So we have to pick numbers which are less than n. So for 12 you can pick 12 ones or you can pick 4 plus 4 plus 4 which is equal to 12 and here the number of perfect squares you used were 3. So 3 is the output which is the optimal answer. Or you can also make 12 with 4 ones and 2 fours. This is also equal to 12 and how many perfect squares you used? You used 6 but we already found a minimum answer which is 3. So 3 will be your output. So what are you doing here? We are picking all the perfect squares less than n and here n is 12. So these are the three options you can use. And in every call you are checking if you can use this or if you can use this or if you can use this. So we keep on doing the same steps. So this is a good example of a recursive approach. So let's build a recursive tree. So here if you pick, we picked one number and we make the recursive call of 12 minus 1. We picked one. So this one represents the number of perfect squares we picked until now. We have to reduce this value from R12 so that we can apply recursive call on this. 1 is already there. So we add plus 1 and do f of 11 minus 1. And here again we do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus f of 10 minus 1 and so on. This tree you will get 11 plus f of 1 minus 1 and f of 1 minus 1 is f of 0 and once f is equal to 0, we return 0. So this is 1. So finally you get 11 plus 1 which is equal to 12. Like I said, so 12 is the answer for this tree. So we have to take minimum of all that. So minimum is initially 2 power 31 minus 1. That is the maximum possible value. And you compare it with this. We check if this value is less than this. Yes. So min will be updated to 12. And similarly here if we picked 1, we picked 1, 4. And we have to subtract 12 minus 4. And similarly here, if we pick 9, so you have to subtract 12 minus 9. And for this, let's build the tree again. So 1 plus 1 plus f of 8 minus 4 and so on. So you make one call here and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus f of 4 minus 4. You get 0. So this will return 0. So you get 3 from here. And this 3 will be our optimal answer. So this is the recursive call you keep on making inside the helper function. And this recursive function there will be many repeated uh, calls for example and here somewhere there will be f of 4 and here also if you see this is f of 4. This f of 4 value we already calculated it but here again you are making recursive call and calculating it. So to avoid these recursive calls you can implement memoization. So you store this value somewhere inside a 1D DPRA because the only parameter which is going to change inside a recursive call is the value of n. So you create a DPRA of size n and you store this value. Next time you want f of 4, this value you can directly get from this memo array. 
instead of making f of 4 call. So this process is called memoization. I'll show you during code how this is done. Now let's take a look at the code. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name and this is the input end given as input. And we have to return an integer as our output representing the number of perfect squares that sum up to n. So let's start off by creating a helper function which is a recursive function. So this will return an integer which will be passed on to the main method. I'm going to name this helper function as helper and take the input n as a parameter. And we are going to return this helper function inside the main function where we pass n as the parameter. And now there should be a base condition for every recursive function that is the exit condition. So for this whenever n is equal to 0 we have to return 0. And now we have to find the perfect squares for that we start a loop where i will be the number which when multiplied with itself so we start with 1 and when i is multiplied with itself so 1 into 1 we are going to check. So if you multiply the same number with itself i into i this should be less than or equal to n and i will be keep on incrementing each time when the loop continues and now we calculate the value the current value which we are going to get so i'm going to name it current and i'm going to add one and call the helper function again by subtracting the current value of i from n so i into i should be subtracted from n and now we need to keep track of the minimum number of uh, current values so for that i create a variable minimum and assign it with the maximum possible value initially and now in each iteration I compare this minimum value with this current value. So using mat.min I compare the current minimum value min with the current value current and now outside the for loop we can return this minimum value. So this is the recursive code. Now if you run this code the test cases will pass but if you submit this you will get time limit exceeded error because there are a lot of repeated calculations. For that we have to implement memoization. And the best way to implement memoization is that you have to check the helper function and how many parameters are changing. Here in the every helper function only one, there is only one parameter which is keep on changing. So we have to use a array to store its value. So I'm going to create a memo array and, and inside the main function I'm going to initialize this memo array which is going to have the size n plus 1 because we start with 0. And initially I'm going to fill all the elements inside this memo array with minus 1s using arrays.fill and specify the array's name and fill that array with minus ones. It means that initially all the values are having minus ones. So if we haven't calculated that value for the end position, that value will be minus one. So inside this helper function before making the call here, if we check, if we already calculated that value, if memo of n is not equal to minus one, it means we already calculated that value. So we can directly return it instead of performing the recursion. So return memo of n and if this is not true it means the value is minus 1. So we have to store this value inside the memo array before returning it so that we can use it in the next calls. So memo of n is equal to min and from the next time when that same value occurs it won't be minus 1 and we can return it from the memo array. Now let's try to run the code. The test case are being accepted. Let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n into root n where n is the input given to us and the space complexity is o of n because we are using a 1d memo array to compute our output. Now let's take a look at the bottom up approach. Now let's take a look at the bottom up approach. For that we have to use a 1d dp array and now let's define the 1d dp array. So I created this 1d dp array and now let's define dp of i which is the state of every element. So dp of i will represent the number of perfect square needed until that value. So for example, if you are calculating dp of 4, this will give us the optimal value of how many perfect square we need to get n is equal to 4. So these values are equal to n. So let's start filling our dp array. We take a dp array of size n plus 1 and we fill the beginning element with 0 because if n is equal to 0, there will be 0 number of perfect squares. Now dp of 1. What is the value of dp of 1? It is equal to 1. What is dp of 2? It is equal to 2. What is dp of 3? It is equal to 3. What is dp of 4? So the number of perfect square needed to get dp of 4 can be found out by 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So you need 4 ones as perfect squares to build 4. So that will be your answer when you pick 1. So if you pick 1 as the perfect square, you get 4 ones. You can't pick 2 because it's not a perfect square. You can't pick 3 because it's not a perfect square. You can pick 4 which is the perfect square so there is 1 4. Now you can make 5 with the minimum value of 5 ones. So if you add 5 ones you get 5. So that is the minimum value until now. 
you can't pick because it's not a perfect square you can't pick three it's not a perfect square you can pick four so if you pick four you need one more one so one plus four is equal to five so how many perfect squares you use you use two so two will be the answer for this now n is equal to six if you pick six ones the minimum value is six you can't pick two you can't pick three you can pick four so if you pick four and if you pick two ones you used three to get six so three will be a probable answer you can't pick five you can't pick six so three is your answer because min of six comma three is three now n is equal to seven you can pick seven ones you can't pick two you can't pick you can pick four so if you pick four you need three ones so how many you use you use three here you used one here so you used four you can't pick five you can't pick six so minimum among seven and four is four so four will be the optimal answer now n is equal to eight so min is equal to eight because you can use eight ones can't use you can't use you can so if you use one four you need four ones so how many use you use four here used one here so five perfect squares or you can use two fours so four plus four is equal to eight which is needed and how many used here you use two so two is also probable answer and minimum among them is two so this will be two and when n is equal to nine you can use nine ones you can use one four and five ones you can use two fours and one one and you can use one nine because nine is a perfect square you can use this so you can use one and minimum among them is one and similarly let me fill for 10 directly for 10 it will be two because we use nine plus one so we are using two perfect squares so that will be two and if n is equal to 11 we can use one nine and two twos so it will be three so nine plus two this two is coming from one plus one so you use three and finally n is equal to 12 and for 12 the optimal value is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 4 and we are using 3 so this will be 3 and now this is not used and now I just wrote it extra so this is not needed and your final answer is present at n is equal to 12 which is 3 which is matching here now let's take a look at the code coming to the code for the bottom up approach we just convert this top down approach code into bottom up for that we don't need the helper function I'll copy the code inside this and paste it inside the main function and now we can remove the helper function and now this memo array, I'm going to rename it into dp. We don't need to declare it globally because there is only one function. I'm going to name it dp, which will be of the size n plus 1. And dp of 0 is going to be 0. Because if you recall, the state inside a dp array, that is dp of i will represent how many number of perfect squares are needed to get that value. Since n is equal to 0, there will be 0 number of perfect squares. Now we don't need the exit condition. We can remove this. We don't need this because we haven't implemented memoization. And now we need to fill our dp array from index position 1 because dp of 0 is already filled. So I use a for loop where i will start from 1 and i will iterate until n. Now I'll place this entire code inside the loop. And now we declare a dp of i with the value i because. So for example if dp of 7 is equal to 7 it means that at the minimum it will take 7 perfect squares because 1 is a perfect square for every number. 7 ones will be added and you get maximum possible value for the 7th index. For 6 it will be 6, for 5 it will be 5 because we add all the ones until that number and represent it inside the dp array. And now we have to calculate the minimum number. For that I am going to use a for loop. Since we already used i here I am going to rename it into j and j into j is less than or equal to i now because we only have to check until its previous number which we reached and now this will become j plus plus and now the same we don't have a helper function so we have to use the dp value now so helper will turn into dp and it will become dp of so like i said we don't need to go until n we only have to go until i and i we renamed it to j so it will become j into j and rest of the code is same and now we don't have a memo array so we return dp of n which will uh, be our answer and now we don't have a um, min variable right so we are calculating dp of i so replace min with dp of i and here also dp of i now let's try to run the code the test case are being accepted let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted which is faster than the previous approach but the time complexity and space complexity is same as the top down approach so time complexity is bigger of n into square root of n 
and that space complexity is big of n because we are using a dpra to compute our output that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video